the previous lesson and video, there are four major trading methodologies. So you have the technical, you have fundamental, you have sentiment based and you have flow based trading methodologies. Within those, you have the four major approaches, which is discretionary, rule based trading, hybrid trading or quantitative trading. And we as price action traders, we will and we are focused on technical analysis and discretionary trading. So technical analysis is a visual way of looking at the chart. So we are looking at the price action visually to read and identify the order flow and the imbalance in the order flow in the market by looking at various patterns and looking at the strength of buying and selling in a particular instrument. And to, to be able to do this, there's one skill we need to strengthen as price action traders, which, which is the, the skill of pattern recognition. And in a, a future lesson, in a later lesson, we will be talking about, or Chris will be talking about how to strength, strengthen your trading skills in particular. So if we look at the price of any financial instrument, it can only do one of three things, which is it can either move down, it can move sideways, or it can move up. And as traders, we are interested in directional moves. So price has to, for us to make money as traders, price has to do one of two things. It has to either move up or move down. If price doesn't move at all, we can't make any money as traders. So we are directional traders and looking for directional moves in the market. So now let's have a look at trends, which are directional moves in the market. And trends can only either move up or they can move down. So we can have a bullish trend or a bearish trend. So if you look at how a trend is formed in this screenshot, in this chart, you can see a bullish trend. So it's moving from the bottom left to the top right. And you can see these wave patterns in a trend. It's very uncommon and very rare that price just moves in a straight line up or a straight line down. It's, it's more common to see a trend where you have regular pullbacks like this wave formation here in this trend. And these, this pattern in trends is called, these are called trend swings or trend legs. So you have a trend swing up and you have a, sw a swing down, a, a swing up, a swing down. And these pullbacks are weaker compared to the trend swings and the trend legs up. And this is what forms the trend. Now, every time price turns, these swing points are formed that you can see now here in the chart. So when price trades up here, it reverses and starts pulling back. It forms a swing point here, a swing high. Once the pullback is over and the next bullish move starts within this bull trend, a swing low is formed, a new swing point, a swing low. And then you have, once the next pullback starts again, you have another swing point that forms. And since this swing point is higher compared to the previous uh, swing point here, it's called a higher high. And once this pullback is over, a new swing point is formed, a new low is formed, a swing low. But this one is higher compared to the previous swing low, which means this is a higher low. So we're in trends, we're talking about a series of higher highs and higher lows, which would be a bull trend or a series of lower highs and lower lows, which would form a bear trend. And this is a very simple way to, to use to spot trends and to see if they are still alive or not. Because if this sequence is broken, it either means price and the instrument is starting to move sideways and pause, or the trend is reversing and a new trend is forming into the opposite direction. If we now look at ranges, which is basically a sideways movement of the market, there is no trend in place and price is just going sideways, you will notice something very interesting. So if you look with the, of this price action here, if you look at this chart, uh, what price is really doing. So you have still these potential trend swings here. You have these swings in place. But if you look at the swing points, I think you will notice an interesting pattern, which is that here you have a swing low. Here you have a swing high, which is followed by a higher low and a higher high. 
So this potentially here was a start of a bull trend, correct? But then you see what happens here. Price forms a new lower low after a higher high. And then it forms a lower high. So this could then also be potentially start of a bearish trend. But what happens then? Then again, you have a higher low printing and a lower high. So as you can see, the swing points in this range, they are pretty much random. So there's no pattern to it. There's no sequence to it like we had in, in the previous, if we go back here, looking at higher highs and higher lows, which forms a trend. In here, it's very, very random which means the order flow is balanced and price is not really going anywhere. It's pausing and waiting for it to be pushed in one direction or the other. Uh, so soon bulls or bears come in and say, okay, we're taking this in instrument either up or either down until then, until new strong order flow enters the market. This order flow is basically a lot, very balanced and just moves sideways. So now let's have a look at support and resistance. So as a general theme that shows up is that about 70 plus percent of all institutional orders are placed at prices ahead of time, which means that only 30% or less of all orders in the market are market orders, which, you know, from a previous lesson, limit orders are resting orders placed ahead of time. Market orders are instantly executed orders. So 70% and more of all institutional orders are placed ahead of time as limit orders. And these limits of orders, they form clusters of orders at various price ranges, which in turn create areas of support and resistance because they affect the balance of buy and sell orders. So, and once these areas form and price gets rejected at these areas, um, then new traders get interested in these areas because they see price stalling, they see price getting rejected, and then these new traders also place more limit orders around these areas, which then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And if there is a subject which repeats itself amongst Forex traders who are struggling with price action over and over again, it's, it, it would be understanding and trading key support and resistance zones corrective. So if you look at this, uh, this chart on the screen, you can clearly see that price is getting rejected up here. It bounces over and over and over again. And so this would be an area of resistance. And here at the bottom, you can see it's also bouncing here one, two, three, four, five times, which is an area of support. And many traders say, okay, I'm drawing a line here. I can see price is getting rejected up here at this resistance. I draw the line here and if price cl closes above, I'll, I'll buy, I'll go long. And as you can see here, this poses a problem because this candle here closed clearly outside above this resistance. And so does it here. So if you would go long here, you would be stopped out and price simply would reverse on you and go the other direction. And the way to look at it is that you see all these rejections, these, these tops here, uh, that they happen in an area, in a price range. It doesn't happen at one, one line at one price. So it happens in various areas around, roughly around this line here. And it's the same with the support down here. You can see here, you have the wicks here, the rejection here, 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 and here. So it's not a clear line in the sand. It's, it's, it's more like a zone. So if we look at this and we draw horizontal lines on this chart like this. So we draw a horizontal line from every point here of rejection at the resistance. And we do the same here down at the support. It should be become pretty clear right away that we're looking at zones of resistance and zones of support, right? So when you then look here at what happened after these zones had formed and price returned to it, have a look at what happened here. Price got down here, but it didn't immediately reverse. It pulled deeper into the area and the zone of support until there were enough buy orders triggered within this zone to outweigh the amount of sell orders, which then in turn reversed price. And then price traded all the way up to the resistance. But as you can see here, there were enough sell orders parked at the lower end of this zone to outweigh the, the amount of buy orders in the market and price got rejected. 
Now it could also have been pulling in deeper, but that doesn't mean this zone failed. So what we need to do as price action traders is to view these areas of support and resistance as zones and not just lines in the sand. So this is how we would like to look at and how we want to look at areas of support and resistance. So as you can see here, clearly none of these zones have been broken yet. Just because price produced a wick here and a wick here and, and a deeper penetration here doesn't mean the zone failed. It just meant that price had to pull deeper into the zone for enough orders to get triggered to reverse price and the balance of, of the order flow inside of this range. And to give you another visual example of this, we can look here, which also, again, you can see the area of resistance, but you can also see the, the wicks here. So you see long wick here, long wick here, wick here. Here, bulls managed to produce a, a higher close inside here, but still got rejected and rejected again. So it's the same here. The wicks represent simply a deeper penetration of the resistance zone before the actual uh, reversal happens and the amount of sell orders in this resistance area outweigh the buy orders and reverses price. Here's a good example of a very wide area of support and resistance. So they come in different shapes and sizes, similar to candlestick support and resistance are the same in terms of variation. Sometimes they're wider or sometimes they're more, more, more narrow. In this case, it's very, it's a very wide resistance zone. As you can see here to the left, you, you have the initial rejections in this area and then the lower part form. So we have a lower part, a middle part and top part of the zone. And just because this area is taken out here doesn't mean it's just all the way free up to trade to continue bullish here. It just means that price is pulling deeper into this very wide zone of resistance. And now we have looked at a couple of ranges, but areas of support and resistance aren't limited to only ranges. They form in trending markets as well. So if you look at this chart here, you can see we have clearly a higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. So this is clearly a trend, right? Based on what we talked about earlier in this lesson. And what you can see here is that once this higher, higher high and higher low had formed, price cleared this area of resistance here, which wasn't very strong, created a new higher high and then came back. But what happened is that here, price treated the previously broken resistance as support, which is something we call a role reversal level, which means this area of resistance changed it, its role from resistance to support. And once traders saw this, they got interested in this area and they started placing limit orders at this area here, which then reinforced this area of support. And as you can see, there are many, many, many bounces here in this area until finally bulls came in and said, OK, it's enough. We're taking this one higher, uh, clear this resistance. And you can see again what's happening, We're printing a new higher high price pulls back all the way to this previous resistance, which now acts as support, which is a rope.